So, what am I doing? A few months ago, I made a D&D overhaul video where I took the models of my D&D party and overhauled them all in my own style. And since then, even those new models that I made have become rather outdated, so it's time for another one of these. Now, two things to bear in mind before I get into this. These models are not going to look as flashy as some others I do, and that's for two reasons. First of all, these models are designed to be D&D models for the fantasy Warhammer setting, meaning they need to be fairly grounded in low fantasy, and secondly, the posing of the models is often intentionally quite stiff, especially on the larger models, because they need to fit into a single roll 20 tiles. These models are not tokens, they are made to look good from top down in a 3D environment. Also, after they are all done, they are put through a Photoshop filter called Poster Edges to make them just look just a little bit grittier and to make them fit better on the Roll20 maps. Uh, shout out to my girlfriend Saf and also to Scorch in the Discord for helping me out with this. But yes, with all that said, let's get going. Starting us off, we have Hamhunch Limburg, or Hexblade Warlock. He is also the party's chef, and a very, very fat halfling. So I'm going to be using the fat shorty technique to make him, and I'm also going to add some neck fat with a keyring. And uh, that will have some fun, uh, fun adding various uh, food ingredients to, to his armor with extra arms and tails and all that stuff. And uh, also, for some reason, he has an evil magical frying pan, so that's going to be fun to make, I guess. Next up is Elisthra... <laughs> 
I can never pronounce this. Ellis Rathla Primrose, Circle of Dream Druid, whatever that means. She's your uh, she's your traditional greeny green druid, dressed all in green. And believe me, I've done a lot of hard work to tone down some of all this green. The first iteration by the person who plays her had her in green robes, green hair, green magic, green everything, really. However, while she may appear friendly in nature, she's actually a vicious murderer who keeps on rolling 20s whenever she tries to knock someone out and has accidentally killed like three innocent people by now by crushing their skulls. And I suppose every party needs a lawful good paladin, right? I guess. Well, we we have one at least. Uh, this is Sir Raoul de Maurienne of Bretonia, Oath of Vengeance Paladin. It's, uh, it's safe to say that he's probably like the main character of the party, as he acts as both the leader and the moral compass, and he's also kind of an overpowered bastard who one-shots everything with massive smite rolls. But... On the bright side, he hasn't actually got any plate armor yet, so I, I, I get to put him in really shoddy looking starter chainmail.
Every good D&D group needs a dwarf, and we had ours. A, uh, a forged domain cleric by the name of Bregthor Emberhand. Unfortunately, Bregthor was also a bit of an idiot, and uh, also accidentally murdered innocent people while trying to knock them out. Uh, unlike Elis Rathla, as I said, unlike Elis Rathla, however, he was also really bad at hiding it. So the guards caught him, and he was executed by firing squad. Uh, Somehow this masked bastard managed to die and kill his character before this new model was even finished. So all the beautiful layering work between cloth and chainmail you're about to see was all for nothing. So uh, yeah, screw you, Breakthrough. Speaking of dead people, Gunnar Gunnarsson, son of Gunnar. This was my own character, a Norskan champion fighter who really wanted to be an Imperial but never quite got the language down as you can probably hear from my northern accent. Unfortunately, my character met an untimely end, taking over 120 damage in one round and dying abruptly at the hands of a giant Minotaur boss. But it was an honorable death, unlike the pathetic end of that bastard dwarf. Anyway, uh, uh, rest in peace Gunnar, you'll probably be able to, uh, to see me reuse a lot of my personal favorite techniques for this character as I notoriously love making layered plate using double model in Heroforge.
Then we have Dee Dee, the College of Glamour Bard. She's also a goblin, so you can imagine she doesn't really fit in. She's also greedy as hell and routinely abandons the party whenever things get rough. You know, n never trust a green skin. But uh, as for the model, since Dee Dee's kind of a weird punky goblin bard, I always have to try and find a, like a strange middle ground between a contemporary musical artist and a medieval bard. Which isn't the easiest, but you know, you can be the judge of how it turns out at the end. Casimir, Path of the Selid Barbarian from Kislev, which is basically a Russian Warhammer. Uh, maybe a little bad timing on that. <laughs> this is the character uh, Bregthor's player we rolled to after his death. He was uh, he was quite difficult to make because he's meant to be huge and he also wears all this bear fur, meaning I had to really kind of stiffen up the pose to fit him into the square and still make his greatsword visible, which you know is important because he's a, he's a barbarian. Uh, but on the bright side, the new fur gear dropped on a Treasure Tuesday not long after I got to work on him, which I immediately put to use and it did make him a little bit easier to be honest.
no doubt the edgiest member of the party is Varen Krauman, a uh, school of necromancy wizard. This one was kind of difficult for me because I basically had to try and adopt the, the typical Hereforge grimdark style, you know, Rillan or Hug Me Too, etc. Varen was supposed to be extremely tall and lanky and basically void of all color save for a bit of dark blue here and there. So it's just a lot of black on black on black on black, which isn't my usual preference, but I'm sure the grim darkers in my Discord can tell me if I pulled it off or not, you know, it's up to you. Finally, as the 10th member in total, there is Karl Reinfeldt of the Empire, Assassination Rogue, who is basically just a sniper, and as you can probably guess by now, this is the character that I have rerolled to after the death of Gunnar. Uh, as I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to try something rather different from Fighter, because uh, to be honest, Champion Fighter is kind of boring, I'm sure a lot of people can agree, but um... That said, I still felt the party adventuring through the Empire needed an Imperial from the Empire, so he is fairly similar in, in aesthetic to what Gunnar was, meaning a lot of black and red and gold and so on, you know.
If you made it this far, then thank you for watching. I am a big fan of hearing crazy stupid stories about D&D, so don't hesitate to share them in the comments below if you want to. Also, make sure to join the channel's Discord where we share and discuss a lot of model creations and other nerdy stuff, like, you know, of course, D&D. Um, but yes, anyway, if you liked the video, then please press like, and if you dislike the video, then by all means, press dislike, and see you next time.